Bill Richardson, Mr. Bailey's Doncaster, 1974. Come on, let's hear the applause for all this. This is great. Oh, this is fantastic. Come on, let's hear it. All you people on the balcony who aren't applauding, put your hands together. Why'd you put yourself through all that pain? Because I feel better for it after I finish doing it. You know, um, I don't know. It's like saying, why do you go out and get yourself drunk, isn't it? <laughs> this is the inside story of a competition to find the most beautiful man in the whole of Britain, Mr United Kingdom, 1974. Come on. Another one, come on. Another one. Right here in Liverpool, welcome Walter O'Malley, ladies and gentlemen. These are bodybuilders, men who sculpt their own living bodies into a work of art by prodigious eating and ferocious exercise. But their physique is directed to no feat of strength or skill. These muscles are not there to propel the skeleton, a skeleton is there to project these muscles. Keep the applause coming, because this is great. Well, sometimes I wonder, you know, what, what it's all for, you know. You train every night and diet and don't go out boozing, you know. It just doesn't seem worth it at times. And then you go to a show and you hear the people clapping, you know. You get a kick out of it, like. So the reward for those years of sweat and the thousands of pounds lavished on a protein diet laced with health pills and anabolic steroids is a mere couple of minutes drenched in baby oil, posing to an admiring audience. Pete, what sort of pain's that you've gone through? It's terrible. It really is. <laughs> <has. laughs> it's the only way to make him grow, though. <laughs> Pete Simpson, Mr. Baby Chef in 1974. This film is about the three most likely men on whose massive biceps and deltoids could fall the mantle of Mr. United Kingdom 1974. The first is Peter Simpson from Mexborough in Yorkshire. My ambition is to win the Mr. Britain title, as well as this uh, Bailey's Miss United Kingdom, and uh, I want the best physique in country. Now that deserves a round of applause. Come on, keep that hand clapping coming. I don't really know why I become uh, a bodybuilder. I should. Uh, I saw the Muslim men in the magazines and uh, they all program on the television that uh, holiday town parade where you used to get the Muslim men and the bathing beauties. And at that age, I was interested then. And uh, I've always been interested in physical activity. So uh, I joined the gym and started uh, bodybuilding. You want to be the best physique in the country? Yeah, the best. I like to be the best in the world, like, but... Uh, it's very difficult. Why is that? Well, you have to compete with professionals. In this country, it's all amateur. Um, the professionals are sponsored. Um, it's easy for them. Whereas we have to work as well as train. Peter Simpson, a promising newcomer to bodybuilding, works at the British Steel Corporation in Rotherham. Like all bodybuilders, he's inured to taunts of effeminacy and grotesqueness. Unmarried, he lives with his mother, who spends a lot of money and a lot of time heaping up enormous meals for her hefty son. 
Mrs Simpson will hear no criticism of her boy's physique. I think they look, I think they look smart sometimes. Not in the clothes, they look, they look better when they're, when they're in the trunks, you know. But uh, very rarely they look smart when they're dressed because it's so difficult for them to buy clothes. They have to be measured for everything. The only thing I can buy ready-made is sweaters and T-shirts. Um, it's difficult to buy a shirt and uh, I just can't buy a pair of trousers at all. I have to have them tailor-made. You're very concerned about diet, aren't you? Oh, yes. Uh, that's very important. It's, uh, I'd say, 70% uh, of the result is obtained through diet. These are the uh, supplements I take. Um, these are uh, brewer's yeast, contain all the B vitamins and uh, a natural overall tonic. This is calcium, um, strong teeth, uh, bones, and uh, also vitamin C as well. This is desiccated liver, which is just dried liver, 70% protein. Kelp tablets for the mineral content and uh, the uh, metabolism boost. Wheat germ, vitamin E and energy. Vitamin C, um, everybody knows what vitamin C uh, prevents colds and uh, flu, but uh, it also takes the soreness out of stiff muscles. And uh, that's bodybuild concentrated protein supplement. You take all that? Every day, yes. <laughs> Two or three times a day. A much-quoted maxim in bodybuilding circles is you train through pain to gain. Four times a week, 52 times a year, Peter Simpson trains through pain to gain at Terry Hollian's gym in Doncaster. trains through pain to gain alongside his friend and fellow contender for the Mr UK title Bill Richardson Bill Richardson also trains through pain to gain Cal keep going go Cal 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 Oh Cal down lower And again one more one more, one more. Come on Cal train up up Cal 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 lower lower Stop it! Stop it! Find it all the way, Bill. Find it! Find it! Bill, what's it all about? Is it worth all that pain? Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. The only way to get to the top is to have to go through pain, a lot of stress, you know. You have to do it. What was the point of that exercise? <laughs> For building biceps and also sure tremendous. You know, you get that effect, you get the peak. Relax, contact. You know, from there. These two then are fancied to get near the title. If Peter Simpson wins, it'll be because of his good proportions rather than his muscle mass. If Bill Richardson wins, it'll be because of his muscle mass rather than his good proportions. <laughs> Burning off all the fat, getting the veins to bulge, and carving the muscles into cuts so that the striations stand out in bold relief. That is the aim. Yes, very good. You're training two of the possibles. Yes. Um, who is going to win? Who is going to be Mr. UK? It is absolutely wide open. Absolutely. You just cannot say that one is a definite winner, as people can go off or come on, depending on your intensity of training, overtraining lapsing on your diet, etc. So no one can say at this stage who's going to win. But Terry, you, you not only own the gym, you not only sell protein foods, 
but you're also a judge. Uh, is there a conflict of interest here? I mean, is it an objective judging? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Completely unbiased the judging. As most of the top boys come and train with me in any case, we're all very, very good friends, and the physique will win it on its merits, nothing else. Bill Richardson lives in Leeds with his wife and two young children. You're not too concerned about diet, Bill? No, I never bothered about a diet. My diet is to eat and eat as much as I want. <laughs> Eat as much as you want. <laughs> I don't bother with diet. Why is that? I mean, most bodybuilders, aren't they very concerned with diet? Yes, most of them are, as I think. But it depends on the, the metabolism. I seem to burn it off with working. <sighs> Come on, then, Bill, one more. Come on. Come on, you black man. <laughs> Bill Richardson was nearly Miss United Kingdom last year. He came a very close second. What do you feel like when you see Bill performing on stage? Proud. Very proud. Some people think it's grotesque, though. Isn't that the people that go watch the bodybuilding wouldn't think it's grotesque, though, would they? Or else they wouldn't bother going to watch it, would they? I, I just feel proud of him. Do you do bodybuilding because you want to prove something? No, I shouldn't say to prove something, no. Uh, I do bodybuilding, as I say, because I enjoy doing bodybuilding. You know, it proves nothing. The only thing it proves is that you have a good physique. Go on, push. Come on, push. When Bill Richardson isn't lifting weights at work or lifting weights at Hollyon's gym, he's lifting weights with his wife in the cellar of his own home. Keep going, come on. Just one more. Here, one more, I know. Come on, concentrate. Right, now slowly. <laughs> Are you going to win this, Mr UK? I don't know. I never say I'll win. I don't say I'll lose. I've got a good chance of winning. Who do you see as your main rival? Peter and Walter Malley. <laughs> Walter O'Malley is our third highly fancied contestant. He lives in Warrington and works on a building site. In one sense, Walter is already Mr United Kingdom. He picked up the title last year, flexing his muscles in a rival competition organised by a rival bodybuilding association. If he wins, he'll be Mr UK times two. Walter O'Malley has a wife, four children, a large appetite and unbounded ambition. Well, it's uh, important to me to, you know, to be the top life. I want to win all the time. I don't want to be second or third. It's winning that matters, you know, to be the best life. I want to be the best now. You mean the best physique in yeah, the country? the best physique in the country, if not the world, you know. Just, that's, I set my aims very high, you know. What do you want to get out of bodybuilding? Um, now I, I think I want to get uh, you know, something for my family, you know, some, uh, you know, some money, like, you know, for the, to better my family, myself and my family. Like. Uh, it doesn't seem no point in going on like and on just for trophies, you know. They're fantastic in that, but you can't eat them if you're hungry. How much does it cost a week to keep yourself in food? Well, it costs about um, £10 extra, uh, what it usually costs for the only person, I'd say. I buy this more or less the same things every day for him, you know, T-bone steaks every day, so I'm used to it now, you know. Is it difficult keeping going with, with, with the children, or...? Do you find that you can manage? I find it a uh, struggle sometimes, you know. But uh, it's all right, it's worth it, really. I like to see him get on, you know. <laughs> 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 
three hours a night, six nights a week, Walter goes through his private agony in a converted stables at the Irish Club in Warrington. Each muscle, dorsal, abdominal and pectoral, the abs and pecs they're called, each muscle is violated and assaulted with a loving masochism until it's gained a personality all its own. It's done for love, little else. Mr United Kingdom 1974 will receive only a big cup and a holiday for two. Is it worth the pain, Walter? Uh, only time will tell. Did that hurt? Oh. Hard. And so the time passed, and as the day of the competition approached, every competitor had reached the peak of his condition. I want to win. We all want to win. But I won't lose any, any sleep over it if I don't win. I don't train to be the second or to be third. I train to be the best. I don't mean that in a nasty way. Like the other fellas, if they're going to win, they're going to have to beat me. Well, I've been training four times a week ever since the finals last year, and I've never missed a workout in a year. So uh, I want to win it pretty badly. It was going to be a close contest. It was an open secret that more than one contestant was taking anabolic steroids to add that extra muscle. For the rivalry was intense and the means justified the end. Walter, how do you feel? Finals tomorrow? Uh, pretty nervous, getting a bit butterflies now that I've arrived. But still fairly confident. Yeah. Still going to be number yeah. one. Well, keep our fingers crossed, eh? Mm. Hope for the best. I've been told that most of the top bodybuilders take anabolic steroids and various drugs. Is that true? Well, uh, yes, uh, it's been known for years, like, that uh, it started with the Americans, you know, taking them, uh, coming over here and taking all the contests, like, looking fantastic. And then our lads, like, got to know about this and they started taking them, you know. Do you take anabolic steroids? Um, yes. Do you want me to be honest with you? Like, quote, you know, yes, I take them, you know. I don't uh, believe in, you know, all this nonsense uh, people saying they're not on them when they are, like, I like to be honest, like. I started taking them when I didn't seem to be getting anywhere. I seemed to be... I got to a certain... Uh, is standard like and just couldn't uh, go beyond that you know kept coming fourths and fifths like so i had to make my mind up then either to take steroids or get out of the game so i decided to have a go how many steroids do you take well for six weeks before uh, a top contest i take uh, four and five a day any other drugs well, there is another one uh, which uh, most of them are using now. It's called thyroid, like it's for the thyroid gland. For thyroid gland. Yeah, for burning fat from the from around the muscle. There. For burning you, fat off. Yeah, if you take this uh, say a fortnight before a contest to give you the muscularity. Give you more muscularity. You mean to, to make your muscles stand yeah, out exactly, more? Exactly. Yeah. To to just to isolate the muscle, like. And burn the fat from round it, you know. Is that not dangerous? Actually, it's very dangerous. Very dangerous, and uh, the most dangerous thing about them is they don't they know so much about them. You know, they, you know, they're not doing enough research on them. So you might be, you don't know what's going to happen in later life. Like, I'm against them. Don't get me wrong. I'm dead against them. But what's fair for one's fair for everybody. You see, and this is what you do. But but you can take all the drugs you want. Uh, uh, training is a thing. You can take 
a thousand a day if you wish, and not train, and you'd be you'd be nothing. Your training is a thing, but those drugs just give you that extra little bit of edge for those contests. See, but, uh, as a guys, just if you said yourself, well, uh, anybody get an idea? I'll just take these drugs and just uh, lie back and wait for my physique to develop. It's just nonsense, because I spend three hours a night in the gym, six nights a week, as you know. The contest proper took place in the afternoon at a large nightclub in Liverpool, hours before the general public were admitted. Here, the bodybuilders paraded before a panel of expert judges. Among them, Terry Holliam, health studio proprietor, Wag Bennett and wife, Di, health studio proprietors and sellers of a lucrative muscle-making food. In many cases, the judges are judging the physiques of their customers who are trained in their gyms and built up by the health food products they sell and they recommend. Although the judges are experts, there's nothing very scientific about the judging. Beauty here is in the eye of the beholder. Where one judge will favour a less developed man of overall proportion, another will favour great granite mountains of beefcake. Right, thank you, lads. Number two. Number ten. Peter Simpson is shortlisted, and so is Walter O'Malley. Abs, please. Abs and thighs. Right, thank you. Double bicep from the back. Right, thank you. Would you turn and face us, please, and give us any pose that you think is your favourite pose? Absolutely anything at all. Right, relax, please. Most muscular. When you're ready, all gone. Take your time, lads. Take your time. Right. Right, thank you, lads. Uh, number 10 and uh, number 11, please. Number two, step back, please. Number 11, please. Stop where you are, number 10. 11 forward, please. Now Bill Richardson is on the short list. Thighs, please. Tense your thighs. Thank you. And abdominals. Right, lads. Could we have abs, please? Right, thank you, lads. The bodybuilders will not know the winner until they've gone through a dummy performance in public that same evening. To the regret of some purists, this important event in the bodybuilder's calendar has been taken over by a chain of northern nightclubs. To add a little spice to the occasion, the nightclub has decided that Mr. United Kingdom 1974 has to rub shoulders with Miss Body Beautiful 1974. Stage, the muscle men are pumping up, literally pumping blood into their muscles so that they bulge like balloons. A muscle will stay up for about half an hour after a good pumping. Thus inflated, it's then dyed with man tan and larded with baby oil, ready for the performance.
your attention for the announcement of uh, results. So all I'm going to do is ask for three girls and five men. There's no order in which I announce them, okay? And the five fellas and three girls make their way back to the entrance to the stage. Right, and this is the final part of the whole thing. The young ladies are announced first. I want um, Jane O'Lacy, Yvonne Trelfel, and Jean Goldston. The men I want Walter O'Malley, Pete Simpson, Bill Richardson, John Holt. Come on. Can you give one, Pete? I'd like to. <laughs> okay, so okay. Very close. Very, very close. close indeed, yeah. Between you and Walter, Bill. Modest. <laughs> Fifth and fourth have been announced. Now it's the first three places. Third place, Mr. United Kingdom, from Warrington, Walter O'Malley. Go to the left hand side, Walter. Walter had not won, he was third. Yet another trophy on the television set, but at what cost to his body, only time will tell. In second place, Mr. United Kingdom, from Leeds. How do you feel? Fantastic. <laughs> really am. Kingdom 1974 from Mexborough, Peter Simpson.